Welcome back to another Tactical Fly Fisher video. Kramer and I just had a fun morning shooting a little segment on the river. So we came back in and now I'm gonna give you a rod review. Uh, today we're gonna review the Adams rods or at least the XTZ and the Max Black uh, since I haven't spent any time with the Max Evo yet. But uh, I have been fishing the uh, XTZ since about last December. So I've had a good long while with them now. That's about seven months. Uh, and I'm gonna give you all the, the breakdown there of this uh, series of rods that is kind of quite unique. Adams is a small company uh, focused specifically on, on making Euro nymphing products. So they now have their Euro uh, mono indicator line and their cider markers, but they started purely as a fly rod company um, based on the shared ideas on rods that the, the two founders had. Uh, and their first rod was the Max Black, um, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, let me take you through some of the characteristics of the XTZ's lineup. Um, and since that's kind of their, their flagship series, their premium rod series, and then I'll just add a little bit on the Max Black at the end. So let's get into the Adams XTZ rod. Uh, this is a purely, as I said, purely Euro nymphing focused rod. Uh, there isn't a lineup of you know other other rod uh, models in there that are kind of crossover rods or anything like that. It's a Euro nymphing focused rod, um, and it has a lot of the characteristics that you might expect from a Euro nymphing rod as a result. Uh, and I think they've done overall a really uh, pretty darn good job with these rods and I've enjoyed fishing them a lot. One thing you'll notice with these rods is that throughout the butt section and the middle of the rod, they're really quite stout. Um, they're all labeled two weights. So there's a 10 foot two weight, a 10 and a half foot two weight, an 11 foot two weight. I, I think frankly that most people would probably consider them three weights when they compare them to most of the other Euro nymphing rods that are out there. So um, if you're looking for a super soft rod that loads with really light nymphs, and protects really fine tippet, but maybe lacks some guts uh, when it comes to fighting fish, that's not these rods. The, these rods have a really stout lower end of the rod. That, that uh, butt section to mid is quite powerful. They have a lot of uh, oomph if you do run into some larger fish, uh, but they do still have that soft tip and that two weight is really more reflective of the, the tip that's on the rod, not really the rest of the rod. So uh, they do protect tippet well, um, and especially the, the 10, 10 and a half foot and the 10 foot rods, they load with pretty light rigs well as, uh, also, uh, but these are not pure, you know, really light finesse rods uh, where you're gonna fish a single two mil nymph all the time and, and expect it to load deeply. Um, they're better all around nymphing rods than, um, you know, a pure, like I say, pure uh, one weight or zero weight type action that you might get out of some rods. Overall, I think this, the progressive uh, taper and flex profile that they have is a, a really good profile for your average Euro um, and it's what most of us probably want out of a rod because that, that profile not only helps you uh, turn those larger fish when you do hook them and protect the tippet and load with that soft rod, but it also results in a real uh, rod that recovers quickly. Uh, they have uh, really quite quick recovery and low swing weight compared to especially a lot of low to mid price rods. Uh, and it's up there uh, with any of the premium rods in, in that performance metric. So they, they do have a nice light swing weight and they do recover quickly. And they don't have that tip oscillation uh, that really slows down your connection at the beginning of the drift or uh, results in inaccuracy when you're casting. The blanks on the XTZ are uh, unsanded uh, black finish. Um, and made out of top quality carbon uh, that helps reduce their weight and you know end up in that, that lighter rod, but also that unsanded finish uh, keeps the rod pretty uh, durable and resistance to impact. So if you hit it, hit it with a bead, it's not as likely to get bruised as if the, the blank was sanded, um, but also they haven't had to paint the rod, which once again adds weight. So. Just like the Contact 2 uh, from Thomas & Thomas, it's a similar type of blank, uh, looks pretty similar. It's a little more black than it is charcoal, like the, the Contact 2, but um, the same idea in the finish of the rod. While the flex profile and the blank uh, are 
what you would expect from a premium Euro nymphing rod. Really, it's the component choices that I think set this series of rods apart. So the guys they've, they've chosen, the handle they've chosen, the real seat, um, they're all pretty unique and geared specifically towards improving the performance of these rods, um, especially for Euro nymphing. So let's start with the guides. The guides are made of uh, single foot recoil guides, so that nickel titanium alloy. Um, these are expensive guides that are put on a lot of the premium rods out there. The one thing that's quite different about their choice uh, on this rod compared to a lot of the other rods I've seen is the sizing or the diameter of those guides is quite a bit smaller. So um, if you look at the, the recoil guides on this rod and compare it to um, maybe guides in a similar location on other blanks from other companies, even other premium companies, you'll notice that the recoil guides they've chosen are really small and have really fine wire. So uh, that makes them great at uh, reducing the weight and then the overall swing weight of the rod. Those light guides really help with, you know, lightening up that rod and helping it to flex and unflex and come back to that neutral position quickly. Um, but the, I guess the one drawback to having the, that fine wire and those uh, small guides, if you do want to end up uh, fishing a, a dry fly or you know regular fly line in these rods, they don't shoot line quite as well. And if you happen to have knots that aren't very flush, that are, aren't trimmed flush in a leader or a connection from the line to your leader that's maybe not very smooth, then I've noticed that they'll, they tend to catch uh, those knots or uh, a little bit more in the guides than if you had a larger one with a larger diameter wire. So a little bit of a give and take there. Um, if you're purely Euro nymphing focused, you won't even really notice that. Um, and that's mainly what these rods are designed for. But the 10 foot two weight especially would, it does make, uh, it does have the profile of a rod that is a nice crossover uh, rod as I'll get into in a second. Um, but you may just notice you're not gonna shoot a lot of line quite as easily. Uh, I think likely because of those smaller guides and those finer wire guides. Uh, these rods have a single stripping guide um, with a nice ceramic insert to try and avoid um, having coiling of your microliter as you're repeatedly stripping it in and out. Um, you're still going to probably get some coiling from uh, stripping it through the, the top guides, so I don't know how much that really helps in that department, but um, the ceramic stripping guide that they do have is really close to the handle. Uh, probably as close or closer than any other rod that I've seen. On the 10 footer, it's about eight inches from the handle to the first stripping guide. On the 10 and a half footer, it's about nine inches. And then on the 11 foot model, it's about 10 inches. So the reason for that um, is to try and eliminate that sag that you get between your handle and the line going over your finger in the handle and then that first stripping guide. If you can reduce that sag, then you'll improve the tactile sensitivity um, of the whole system through the leader. And uh, that's also what uh, the, the handle is really geared for in this rods as we'll talk about in a second. But before we get there, uh, the real seat. The real seat um, is a carbon insert, um, kind of completes the techie look of the rest of the rod. The rod pretty much is all black except for those uh, yellow accents that it has on it. Um, and uh, the neat feature really about the whole reel seat though, it is a down locking reel seat. So that helps improve the balance of the rod. But even more so, uh, Adams has put a counterbalance itself in the fighting butt of the rod. Um, so that leads to the rod looking like it's quite heavy if you just look a, at a spec sheet on a page. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what these rods weigh, but um, they weigh noticeably more on a page than other premium Euro nymphing rods. But a lot of that weight is concentrated in that uh, fighting butt, and that really helps the rod balance, you know, have a balance point that's deep into the handle, and uh, helps the rod feel very light in the hand, even if uh, on a spec sheet you wouldn't expect that to be the case. But um, I think while drifting and holding it out fishing, uh, these rods probably are up there with the lightest rods in, in feel as you're making those drifts. Um, I can hold it out there and just the rod will pivot in my hand without me doing any flexing uh, to keep the tip up. So it's really nice in that regard. The most polarizing feature of these rods is the handle. So the handle is built of carbon fiber. Um, 
it, uh, <laughs> it's an interesting thing to try and get used to when you first come from fishing cork. I remember the first time I held uh, these rods on the river, I was like, wow, that's, that feels really hard, and it is. Um, and it is also quite rough. So it's woven carbon fiber, um, which leads to it almost feeling like you have a low, like a sandpaper type feel uh, in your hand. And at first, it's, uh, it may take you a little bit of getting used to. Uh, within a day or two of fishing it, I honestly got to where I wasn't even noticing it anymore. Um, and I go back and forth between cork grips and this carbon fiber grip now, and I, you know, it doesn't bother me. But um, it is a polarizing feature of the rod. You're either going to love it and probably buy the rod specifically for that carbon fiber handle, or you're going to hate it. Um, and so that'll be, you know, one of the biggest factors and uh, I, I assume in whether you want to look at buying this rod or not. Now, why do they have that carbon fiber handle? Um, if you remember the video I did back over the winter about w choosing a Euro nymphing rod, one of the things that I talked about um, was that for me, I spot my takes visually, um, pretty much all of them I spot visually. But there are quite a few people out there who rely on tactile sensitivity or feeling uh, a strike or a take. Uh, this rod is made to you know, increase that sensitivity, kind of like the, the handle grip on the Syndicate Reaver. Uh, the same idea with this, it's that cork uh, that is on a typical rod, it's an insulative material. It, it deadens a lot um, of vibration. The, the carbon fiber handle on these Adams rods is made to transmit as much vibration from the rod to your hand as possible and thereby help you feel takes. Um, and if you also remember in uh, that uh, video I was talking about, um, I said that I was testing a specific rod that might make me eat crow and, and decide that I was wrong. Uh, the Adams rods obviously were the rods that I was starting to test at that time. I'm still not ready to eat crow and say that um, my entire world was changed uh, because of the, the carbon fiber handle, mainly because my personal style is that I have trained myself over the years to spot my takes very, uh, you know, spot very small takes and not rely on feeling uh, the takes for confirmation that a fish is there. However, I will say um, it did not take me long to realize that I w I'm seeing takes and feeling them often simultaneously with these rods and uh, the confirmation of that feeling is more positive. It is um, more obvious where, especially with a micro leader, if you have a, that direct connection to, to your fly or your flies, with this rod, you can feel pretty positive grabs from fish that either I, you wouldn't feel or you would not feel the difference uh, as much from the fish if it was, you know, I think what really I've felt is that I can separate feeling what's bottom and what's a fish a little bit easier with this because you'll feel the actual chomp sometimes of the fish taking it in and it being a little more positive that sensation than if you just happen to tick bottom and and there's not as much of a, a vibration there but it just kind of stops dead so uh while you know i'm not ready to wait until i feel every take uh, I do think that the cork fiber or the cork handle on these rods does increase sensitivity um, and it will help you feel extra takes if you're especially not used to spotting them all. Or at least it'll maybe help you confirm uh, certain things that are takes uh, and separate them from whether it's bottom or a fish taking your fly. As a caveat to that, um, do take into account that that relies a lot on the specific leader that you're fishing. So um, most people shouldn't start with a micro leader. You know, they should be starting with a thicker tapered um, uranymphing leader to help them learn to cast uh, that rig accurately and without frustration and without tangles. And there are some benefits to those thicker leaders for certain applications as well. Uh, but if you're straight Euro nymphing and you can work your way down to a micro leader, that micro leader is already going to increase the sensitivity of your system drastically on its own. And if you fish a much thicker leader on these rods, you're probably still not going to feel much. Um, so 
the carbon fiber handle won't overcome basically the limitations of your leader is what I'm trying to get across here. If you're fishing a much thicker leader, you're still probably not gonna feel much. If you can work your way down to fishing a very thin micro leader, you know, 3X, 4X, 5X for your butt section of your Euro nymphing leader, then that's when the carbon fiber grip can then add to the sensitivity of the whole uh, system that you have and increase that, that, uh, that feeling of takes for you. Uh, in addition to that on the carbon fiber grip, I guess the, the only thing I don't like as much about it, um, it's fairly bulbous at the top to give you a nice uh, part of the handle to hold. And then it has this continuous taper kind of a cone shaped taper down toward the rail seat. Um, for me, in my hand, I, I, I kind of constantly find myself sliding down that handle and then the base of my hand running into that, the nut that is on the rail seat, uh, which that's not a terribly comfortable place to rest my hand. So then I slide back up and I'm okay again. But uh, since I'm often reaching out there a long ways and just trying to get a couple extra inches of reach if I'm casting a long way across the river, I find myself you know, having that natural slide down the handle. But uh, if you, you know, it's a, it's a perfectly comfortable handle to hold as long as you maintain grip near the top, somewhere on that more bulbous part of it. Um, so I've just had to pay attention to that and try and train myself to stay a little bit further up the handle and not let my, my grip slide down. Okay, that gives you an overview of these rods in general. Like I say, I think they're excellent rods. Um, they're up there among my favorites now, and I've really enjoyed, especially fishing the 10 and a half foot three weight as my kind of as a primary Euro nymphing rod. It's uh, I swap back and forth with uh, the 10 foot nine inch contact two a lot with it, uh, and I love I love it. You know, it's a great rod. Now that we have uh, gone through that overview of these rods and what kind of sets them apart, let's take a quick look at the individual models. Uh, there's only three, so it won't take long. Let's start with the 10 foot two weight. Um, whenever I get a new you know, rod, uh, whenever we get, get a new rod in the shop, the first thing I always do is put it together and do a flex test. And then after that flex test, I think to myself, what does that remind me of? And I'll grab usually another rod or two out of our inventory that, that uh, it reminded me of, and I'll flex test it next to them and, and see how similar they are. And the 10 foot two weight in the Adams XTZ is very similar in flex profile to the 10 foot two weight of the Diamondback Ideal Nymph. Um, when I first flexed it, I was like, dang, that feels a lot like the Ideal Nymph. And sure enough, when I get them out, they have very similar flex profiles and they both have very quick recovery speed. Um, so I would almost say they're somewhat uh, interchangeable in those metrics. Uh, they're both really good rods for that. You know, the main thing that sets the atoms apart in that department is the handle that carbon fiber grip um, instead of the cork that you'll find on the Diamondback. So the, I fish the Diamondback a ton. Um, if you've seen in previous video, videos where I've talked about fishing dry droppers on Euro Nymph leaders, that is the rod that I really like for that method. And so the Adams XTZ, in, in addition to being uh, you know, a great Euro Nymph rod, the 10 foot two weight makes a great dry dropper rod uh, especially on a Euro nymphing leader. Also, I think if you're wanting that rod to uh, to have like that one rod that does it all type of situation, as long as you can uh, accept those smaller guides that might not shoot your line as easily, uh, the 10 foot two weight is a good rod for dry fly, straight dry fly fishing, nymphing, dry dropper, you know, that kind of crossover do it all rod. It'd be a good choice for that. All right, now the 10 and a half foot three weight. Uh, this one falls in the middle of the lineup in terms of length, and I think in terms of power uh, and recovery speed as well. The tip is just a little softer on this rod than either the 10 foot two weight or the 11 foot uh, two weight. Uh, I think this is like the the best of the three as a dedicated specific Euro nymph rod, um, only a nymphing rod. Like it's got the exact characteristics I like in a straight Euro nymph rod. It's got that nice stout butt section and middle section to uh, improve the recovery speed of the rod, helps it be really accurate, but does have a soft enough tip on there that I fish six and seven X with this rod all the time. Um, and I 
I'm able to load uh, with pretty light rigs. You know, I'll take a single light nymph, a 2.3 millimeter bead or something like that, and be able to laser uh, that, that fly pretty quickly up into a pocket without a problem. Um, and I have landed some really large, you know, un unexpectedly large fish on this rod, really without too much problem. The biggest fish I've caught all year um, was in a uh, pocket back in late April or May, uh, where I was not really expecting a huge fish, but I got one and I was able to keep that big old fish in the pocket that I hooked it in without it running downstream and I was really surprised. So it's a it's got a great mix of that backbone and that strength to be able to fight large fish, but also still that soft tip to do all the things that you need a Euro nymphing rod to do with casting of the light rigs and protecting tippet and all that. So the 10 and a half foot three weight, it's, uh, it is a really great rod. Um, I like it a lot. It, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't have the exact flex profile really of any other rod that I've uh, tested against. I would say it's the most similar to the 10 foot nine inch uh, contact to uh, in flexing it back and forth against other rods. Maybe the 10 foot um, eight inch zero one weight or zero two weight, I can't remember what, how it's labeled, of the Hardy as well. Flex profile wise, they're, they're somewhat similar, but the Adams uh, 10 and a half foot two it, I would say has a little bit softer tip than the, the 10 foot nine inch contact two. Um, and so that's maybe where it sets itself apart a little bit there. Just a little bit more protection for fine tippet and things like that. Okay, the last rod in the lineup of the XTZ is the 11 foot two weight. Uh, this is, Kind of a Bob over at Adams thinks of this uh, in addition to the Max Black as kind of like a trophy trout rod or um, you know a, a little more power for those big river, big fish situations. And that's what this rod is built for. Um, like most other 11 foot rods, it's got significantly more swing weight than the 10 and a half foot rod does. It's also really quite stout all the way until the tip. I actually just got it back out to remind myself. I flexed it against the 11 foot two inch three weight contact two um, and it's stouter through most of the blank than that three weight uh, contact two is. Uh, so it's, you know, I would say it's the most three weight <laughs> out of the whole lineup of the XTZ rods. So the, the two weight label on it, I think is a little bit of a misnomer. It's really quite a stout rod with a lot of power. Um, I think of this rod as basically just a big, rod, a big river nymphing rod. And so if you have large water with, you know, heavy flows and you got to turn larger fish all the time, but also still reach out uh, to those seams that are a long ways out that you can't wade to, then the 11 foot two weight is a good choice for you. It's not the rod that I would take to my local small streams or even medium sized water where I can wade easily and I maybe want a little more tip of protection, a little more uh, delicacy and less swing weight. Um, it's gonna feel heavier and a little more fatiguing in the hand all day, making those repeated drifts held at distance, you know, high, high sticked. Uh, it's going to be a little more taxing than the 10 and a half or especially the 10 foot two weight. So, um, but if you, if you have that big river situation, then the 11 foot two weight is probably a good rod for you to check out. Real quickly, before I end, end the video, I wanted to touch on the Max Black as well. Uh, the Max Black is the first rod that Adam's ever produced. Uh, both Bob and Danny, the two um, co-owners or co-founders of the company, they're both kind of big fish hunters. Uh, if you check them out on Instagram, either the Adam's page or, or Trout Hunters Guides, I think, in Spain, um, which is Danny's guiding company, they both catch a lot of big fish, they kind of focus on those rivers that have low numbers of large fish. And so they both wanted a trophy trout Euro nymphing rod. So the Max Black is the, the rod that they came up with originally to fit that bill. And um, I think it does it well. Uh, when I first got the Max Black out of the case and started flex te testing it, I immediately thought of the 10 foot nine inch four weight uh, contact two and sure enough, when I flex them back and forth, they have really similar profiles. Even though the Adams is obviously three inches shorter, the flex profile of them is quite similar. So um, it's labeled the three weight. I think it fishes more like the four weights that I find in other rod companies. 
and that's what it's for. It's as a it's a trophy trout rod. It's got uh, it's a little bit less expensive because the the carbon fiber is basically one grade lower, um, and some of the components aren't quite as uh, expensive as well. The reel seat and the guides are, are both kind of one grade lower, still perfectly uh, good components. Um, and the rod does recover really quickly. It, instead of an unsanded uh, blank, it has a sanded uh, blank to help reduce weight. Um, so as far as being a trophy trout rod, a, a Euro nymphing rod, it probably has the lowest swing weight of most of the, or of any of those, you know, four weight type rods that I've, I've tested. It does really still feel quite light in the hand and it recovers quickly. Um, so it's a good choice if that's the style of rod that you're after. You know, if you're, if you're somebody who likes to go jig Euro streamers or uh, jig streamers or uh, fish really heavy, a lot of four mil beads and big heavy water and you need a lot of power to set the hook uh, in, in a big river, then this is a good rod for you. It's not the rod if you're fishing, you know, tippet that's finer than 5X a lot. If you're fishing six and seven X tippet, it's not a good choice for that. Um, if you're more in that 5X, 4X and above department, then it's probably a good, good choice. Um, so that uh, covers both the XTZ and the Max Black. Um, I hope you enjoyed this rod review. And if you do have any more questions about the Adams, feel free to, to uh, send the shop an email, info at uh, tacticalflyfisher.com. And uh, if you get any other questions about other rods, happy to answer them too. And make sure that you get the rod that is best for you based on what you're looking for in that rod and maybe a certain budget that you might be trying to fit it into. Thanks for watching this video and go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate that. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that next time we either post a review or an on the water tutorial like the one I did this morning, you'll be sure to know that uh, we've posted it when you get a notification on your phone.